Hey everyone, it's John here from Contrabim with another tutorial video here on Archicad and specifically today we're going to be talking about composite structures. Now a question that I get very often is how do you take the information within composite structures and start breaking it down and associating different descriptions and uh, unit cost values so that we can ultimately know what the entire assembly uh, should be priced at and so that we can look at different comparisons, look at different composites and uh, really make the best decision for uh, the project. So uh, in this example here, we're going to be looking at kind of like a, a very generic uh, brick foundation wall uh, detail here uh, where we have essentially just a composite floor a composite wall and we have this sitting on a little stem wall or a wall foundation here and as well as a strip footing so uh, we got four elements all kind of tying together these are elements that i've just pulled out of the favorites here in just the u.s default version so um, there these haven't really been set up at all but we're going to go through in this video and talk about that and do a little bit of a setup on these so that we can really understand the information that's in them and get a good idea of what the overall cost impact of these assemblies are so uh, just a quick note in this video we are going to be using some methods that are part of the brand new ContraBIM systems workflow so that's the information we're going to be adding to these elements and uh, using that to build up these different cost assemblies. So, all right, let's get into it here. So it's great to see this in 3D, but sometimes looking at these types of things, it's, you know, it doesn't do a good job looking at it in 2D. We can kind of see what's going on, but looking at this in section is really the, the, the location where we can see how everything is coming together. Now, the way these are drawn is essentially this slab is just interconnecting all the way out to the edge of the stem wall. The uh, wall here is actually drawn all the way from the footing going up. Um, I did have to add in one uh, element operator here to cut the uh, the gravel base as well as some of the, the framing elements here that uh, were not naturally being cut with the building material uh, priorities in this case. But uh, So that's all I've really done is I've just kind of placed these together and there we now have an assembly. So let's actually start with, uh, we can start with a few basic elements here. In this case, our strip footing and our stem wall are both very kind of basic elements. The, these are uh, the basic structures. And so let's just start by going through the quick process of loading these up and then we'll go one step further and get into the composite structures here. So I want to start out simple and then we'll get a little bit more detail. So, okay, let's start out by just selecting our strip footing here and we can take a look at some of our properties and we can see that we have a lot of properties here. So this is great. We have everything we need here, um, but really where I'd like to begin with this is typically going to be with our classifications. So, in this case, I like because we're here in the US, I'm going to be using a master format classification system. Wherever you're at around the world, uh, definitely load in the classification systems that apply in your location. But in this case, we're just going to go to a structural heavyweight concrete in this case, and we'll assign it to a system classification here for standard wall foundations. We can actually do the exact same thing on our. Uh, our stem wall here by going in and we'll just make these two assignments. So once again, this is a uh, structural concrete. So we'll drop that in its material classification system and then we will give it its uh, system location, which is wall foundations again. So, okay, we've assigned these two. What I'd like to do now is let's actually add some labels to these elements because I find labels are really a useful way of uh, reviewing the content, making sure that we have a way to get instant feedback without having to select elements. And so let's just go ahead and we're going to grab this kind of favorites label here. I got a few fav uh, labels pulled off to the side here. Um, and so what we're going to do is let's just go ahead and we can just simply give this a label. So, all right, we can see here we have a system code coming through, which was from our classification. We have a trade coming through. We have our ID, which is being noted up here. We already have a takeoff value here. So right now, or sorry, this is okay. So our unit cost, it's 
our unit cost is blank, but it's being multiplied by a 56.67 square feet here. So where is that information coming from? Uh, we actually have a few other values down here as well. So we have a square footage value, we have a volume, uh, that value doesn't quite look right um, in this case, but we'll go in and check that. Uh, we also have a length here. So this is 120 inches long, 16.6 cubic yards. That doesn't seem right. So to, to adjust that value there, we need to certainly pay attention to our calculation units and rules here. So if we go in, I bet we're going to find our area or volume is in cubic feet, which it is. So let's switch that over to cubic yards, our length we would want definitely either decimal feet or feet and fractional inches. It doesn't really matter too much in this case. So we'll just switch those. And okay, we can see that yes, this is now updated. That looks much, much better. Okay, so let's dive into this label just a little bit deeper here so we can kind of understand what's going on. So you can see by the highlighted values in this label, we have a lot of auto text happening here now if we double click on this or if we if we uh sorry if we select this and then we go into our auto settings it'll take us directly to where that is being referenced from so in this case we can see we have a takeoff value here um, and we also have a unit here and what's interesting about that is we can adjust these and it's going to automatically adjust, adjust those as well. We also down here have a volume, so we can see where this is coming from. It's a quantity takeoff value, and we have a dollar per volume. So what is that? Well, we'll find out here soon. This is a, uh, an expression that we'll run through and uh, calculate that cost per the unit that we set in this case. So let's go ahead and let's make a few little adjustments here. And we won't make an adjustment to our label, we're just going to make an adjustment to our footing in this case. And let's start by actually going through and say we wanna price this by linear feet. We can go in, change that value, change this to say 20 per linear foot here. And let's take a look at what's going on. So now we can see our unit cost has changed. So we have $20 per linear foot, and our takeoff value has changed so that it's our length of our footing here. In this case, we can see our length down here. These values are the same, but we're also getting immediate feedback on our cost per volume. So this is what I would call a very basic uh, way of approaching this, um, where we're just simply determining what uh, value we wanna use by our units. We're plugging the associated unit cost, we get a calculated cost for that item, and then we also get some cost comparables here. All of this being just set up directly within Archicad. So let's try this one more time, and let's actually go here to our foundation wall. Um, I'm gonna try that input again. Okay, well, we can take this and move it. So it's a little bit more out of our way. Okay, so we can see a lot of the similar information. We can go in and if we wanted to price this by, um, by square feet in this case, we could give it like say $10 per square foot. And just by plugging this in here, we can see how all of these are going to adjust and we can get our cost per length, 16 per linear foot, we can get our cost per volume. So this is just basic. Um, expressions running in the background. So, all right, that's a little bit of an introduction here into how we can load up some model elements with units. And based on those units, we can assign a unit cost and we can start producing these exact uh, cost uh, outputs here. Now, let's go one step deeper now and start getting into, uh, we'll go from basic into composite structures. Now, with our composite structures here, there's a lot more going on. And so to talk about how these get set up, I think it's really uh, good to, uh, let's just start by selecting a slab and we'll go in and take a look at some of these properties that are going on here. Now, um, in order to do that here, we can actually assign, I'm going to just kind of start with a base label, uh, just exactly the same as what we've done before. And we can go in and kind of start with this high level of detail here. Now, um, if we go in, we can see here that we have a square foot cost. Now we could just plug a general 
all in square foot cost here, of maybe like $15 a square foot. And that would include every single layer. So our flooring, um, let's actually pull this up so we can get a better idea of what's in here. Um, so we have a wood flooring, there's a wood OSB, there's a pressure treated wood uh, kind of furring strip on the bottom. Then we have a structural concrete and we have a gravel base. And who knows, maybe we even have like a vapor barrier uh, somewhere in between here. So um, it's not called out specifically, but we can always go in and build on these composites as well with the information stored behind them. So, all right, let's go ahead and let's start diving into this. Well, actually, let's do this first. Let's set this up for using a basic cost and then we'll actually go in and we can make some adjustments to make the, to build this up with each of those different details there. So, all right, let's start here. We have our slab selected and let's go in. We've already plugged in $15 per linear or per square foot. So we're actually seeing all of this being calculated already. Our length in this case, it looks like a null value there because slabs don't have lengths. So obviously that's not going to apply in this case. Um, but we can also go in and we can just simply give it a little bit of uh, definition here. So um, since we only have one option here for tagging it with a master format classification, we could either use the concrete structural or we could go with like the finish and give it like a uh, wood flooring would be a way to take this. So another thing that we can do here is this is definitely going to be, in this case, I would consider this probably a slab on grade assembly. Okay, so now we've assigned some basics. Let's start getting into the details here. And in order to jump into this, um, well, actually, let's, let's do this. Let's actually take our label here. And what I want to do is I want to actually just copy this. And we are going to go in and really start building this up, this cost assembly here. So what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to start deleting a lot of this here. And what I want to do is I want to start giving this a little bit more structure here. So we can actually use some spaces. We can use tabs in this case to create a nice clean line. And I want to go through and I want to start building this up from the top down. So um, our top surface here is going to be um, a cost that's relating to, let's see what we have available um, for our top surface cost. Well, if we go down here to some of these uh, composite details, we have an outside top finish type and we have an outside top finish cost. So I'm actually going to start with our finish cost and our finish type. And so we're going to add both of those here and I'm just going to give it a single space. So that's one level. The next level here is it looks like we have an OSB or like a sheathing layer underneath here. So let's go in and let's add our top sheathing cost and our sheathing type. And once again, we'll give it a space. Now we're going to just kind of repeat this a few more times. So uh, once again, we have a furring cost and a furring type. So we can add those. And we're starting to get down now to our concrete level here. So let's add in a value here for our concrete, which would be our framing type and our framing cost. I did that backwards, so I'm going to cut this one, paste it, give it a space. And then we're starting to get down uh, to our gravel layer. So one thing that I think I might do here is let's actually add something that isn't actually in our composite, but something we probably want to account for. And in that case, it's going to be in our insulation and we can give it like a weather barrier uh, type here or a waterproofing type. Um, but I'm going to use this one in this case. So we'll use this these available parameters to define, you know, kind of a vapor barrier. And then finally, we are getting down to our very bottom location here. And we are going to be actually getting out of our composites and we will jump over to, let's see, I'm looking for it, not seeing it. I know why we weren't seeing it there. It's because it was at the very, very bottom. Um, down here under earthwork, we have a base type course or a base type fine. And so we're gonna go with our base course and our course type. And so that way we can plug in those gravel layers. So, all right, so we got all of this functioning here. 
what I'm going to do is let's, uh, actually we don't have it functioning yet. We're still kind of building up this label. And so the final thing I wanna do here is we are going to give ourselves our total for all of these added up and combined. So in that case, it's going to be our uh, composite assemblies and it's going to be our composite cost here. And I'm just going to type in, uh, well, let's do this. I'm actually going to give it a parameter here for our composite. So that one's already populating. So we can give it like a, you know, total, total for that. Okay, that's kind of a long description, but um, that's okay. So all right, we now have this functioning here, or we have our label kind of set up. We, it's not functioning quite yet. We have a lot of values that still need to be populated. But what's nice about this is now we have a preview of how all this is going to work. So when we start going in, we can actually get in here and we can start plugging in. So this is wood flooring is what our finish type is. So you can see as soon as we click that there, it's going to update. And let's just give this $5 for our wood flooring. We can actually see that our total down here is already including that. So let's continue. So our, we have, what is this? I think it was a, a OSB one half inch, I believe. We may have to go in and correct that. But in that this case, we are going to give it like $1.50. So, all right, you can see where this is going now. Um, we're going down the list, but it, based on our label, it's kind of jumping around a little bit. So, sorry, I put this in the wrong one. That is going to be our sheathing. Our furring is going to be uh, uh, pressure treated furring 1.5, okay? And let's leave that as, we can go like 150 for both of these, just as kind of a placeholder. Okay, so now we're getting down to our framing here. So this is a uh, concrete slab, four inch. We can plug that in and we are just going to give it $4 for that framing member. So you can see that we are already building this up here and we got this working pretty well. Um, we need to add our uh, we could just call this like a fit, uh, let's just say vapor barrier 15 millimeter. So we got that and we are going to give this, I don't know, let's go like 50 cents a square foot for that. Okay, so we are almost done. We got one more. It is our base type. So let's just call this uh, gravel, I don't know, one half inch. And for our layer here, which looks like it's maybe four inches, um, I'm going to just make a note here, four inches of one half inch gravel. So in this case, we can go maybe 50 cents a square foot for that as well. So, okay, so we've gone through and we've built this up now. And you can see that for the total on this of wood flooring, and everything underneath it, we've now created this assembly and we can see our preview, which is now $13 per square foot in this case. So actually we were kind of close. We were guessing $15 per square foot for this, um, but we have one more step here that we need to do to update this. So, um, so, so what's being pulled here right now is just our general unit cost and our cost uh, or our quantity takeoff. One thing that we need to do is we have our base unit cost here. Actually, in this case, this is a unit cost variable, which is actually what we want. Um, in order to uh, update that, so it references this one down here, we have actually an option set that will, that will allow us to pick and choose which one we're going from. So right now we're set to our base unit cost here, which is $15. That's why it's calculating through. We can choose our composite and we can see what our unit cost is now. And before we can even check our label over here, we can see that that is now updated as well. So, okay, so this is all functioning. It's working quite nicely. Um, there's a few things that we can do though, if we wanna say add in like a quantity factor. Say we wanna, we're at 100 square feet right now. If we go to 1.1, um, we can see that that's bumping it up there. So that's 
that's nice. Um, that's working for us. Um, we can do other factors like a difficulty factor um, or a, a location factor. Say we wanted to add another 10% for our location factor. So that's going to bump up just our cost. It's not going to adjust this value at the moment, but it's going to include that there in um, that value. So, um, so yeah, you can see how all of this, just by plugging in some different values for each of these different layers, we're now setting this up and really kind of creating a nice little rig that we can then uh, go and build a project with. So um, let's do one more example here. I think it's worth kind of repeating this process once again, and um, we'll do it with our wall in this case. So let's jump in here. I'm actually going to grab a, well, we can use this similar label. Um, we can go ahead and in this case, I'm just going to tag it. And so now let's just kind of focus specifically on this wall. So let's see how fast we can do this. Uh, we'll kind of just blow right through it because we now have this set up and we'll make adjustments to our label at the end. So, okay, first step here is let's just make sure that we have our appropriate codes assigned. So this is going to be a brick veneer wall. So we are going to jump into our masonry, unit masonry, clay unit, brick masonry, brick veneer masonry okay one down one to go this is our exterior walls so exterior walls there we go exterior wall construction we've now assigned both of our classifications needed okay great let's continue so looking at this here one thing i actually like doing at times is let's actually go in and edit this composite and to help me through this exercise, I'm just going to window snip this, copy it, exit out, and, oh, that's a little larger than I want, but I'm just going to paste this directly in here so that we have a nice reference as we are going through and trying to build this up. Okay, so there we go. We can see our assembly and now let's start working through it so okay properties we can just do like a general unit cost i'm going to go like 40 dollars per square foot for this just kind of guessing and we'll see how close we are to that but right away we can see that already we are calculating our total cost so that's kind of like our initial projection in this case but let's go through and build this up now so first thing is we have our outside finish so this is brick uh we'll call this uh running bond uh i'll just call it brick running three and five eighths and i'm going to give this 25 dollars a square foot for that brick veneer okay coming up next here so we're actually going to have just an air gap here so we don't really have any furring in this case we do have a sheathing layer but it's going to be kind of buried in here a little further so this is going to be uh, sheathing one half and let's go like two dollars a square foot for that we have a framing cost so in this case this is a wood stud frame that's five point uh we're gonna say two by six okay okay framing cost there is also going to be about two dollars a square foot so we don't have any interior sheathing but we do have our jip board wall uh what is it it's five eighths and i just like defining like typically like a level four finish in this case so once again, we can just plug in like an average of like say $2 a square foot. So could be a hunt, like 150, could be 125 depending, but we're just going kind of like $2 across the board just to kind of see how this builds up. We're being conservative here, but, um, but yeah. So that includes pretty much everything that we would have under our composite details. Now we're getting into our insulation. So we actually have two types of insulation here. We have a, uh, let's call this, foam board 1.5 and whenever I'm thinking of foam board I usually think whatever the thickness is is about how much it is a square foot 
We also have bat insulation here. So for a six inch stud, let's just call this bat uh, 6R13 or R19. We can define the value. And let's plug in a cost for this of just say a dollar. Okay, now we got our insulation foam board. Now that can probably act as a weather barrier as well, but we could also give it like a uh, vapor, or we could just call this like a building wrap. So we got some options here and we're just going to go maybe like 30 cents for this, 35 cents. Okay, so we are building this up now. Um, we have a few more things that we need to add as well. So, um, and actually just one more point, this weather barrier here, if we wanted to list this later on based off the materials here, this airspace is actually pretty useful for that at times. So something to be, uh, just want to make that, that quick point. All of these values here that we're plugging in can essentially be related to each of these when it comes to, uh, individual listing of each of these materials. Um, but we'll talk about that in another video. So, okay. So we have pretty much everything here that we want to include except for one additional, which in this case is going to be our interior, uh, painting type. So I'm just going to call this interior, interior prime plus paint and we are going to give this say like a dollar fifty we can do two dollars doesn't really matter but we've gone through and now added several different layers we added one two three four five six seven different details to this buildup and um, so now we are pretty much at that point where we can see what our total is um, this total down at the bottom here is going to calculate regardless of what we have listed in our label, but we can go through and just make a few adjustments here. Um, let's do this. So um, I want to pan up just a little bit so I can see my sequence. And so, all right, so we have, let's see, we have this value here, this row, I'm going to cut it and I'm going to paste it here. I'm just going to go in and redefine what these are. So this, in this case, I'm going to go and call this our weather barrier. It's our our vapor barrier. So I'm just going from the outside in. Um, this can be a, we want our, our cost in this case. So weather barrier cost, 35 cents. Okay, it could be on the outside or it could be actually on the inside here as well. Um, we have our sheathing, but that's going to be pretty far in there. It's actually, okay, actually, no, that's where it should be. We have our wood stud framing. We don't need this building wrap in this case. Actually, we already had that. I should have just cut that one and pasted it up there. Um, but this value here, well, let's go in and re-specify where this is coming from. So we need our bat insulation cost and our bat insulation type. So we're building these up. We don't have any base in this case, but we do have an interior finish. So let's go to our interior finish cost and our inferior interior finish type. Okay. And so what are we missing here? We need that insulation, which is going to be right about here. So I'm just going to kind of build this up once again by putting a dollar symbol so we can get that looking nice and clean, we can add our rigid insulation cost and our rigid insulation type. And okay, so brick, our building wrap, foam board, sheathing, uh, wood stud frame with our bad insulation, and then we have our Jip board, and we actually have one more here, which would be our paint. So, coatings, interior cost, and type. And so, there we are. A little formatting here, and we are pretty much wrapped up with this. So, you can see how we've gone through and just listed all the different components here inside of these two assemblies. And this is perfect because now it's calculating for us. The last thing, if we wanted to 
you know, switch this over would be to actually go into this assembly and we just need to pick and choose that we are using our composite unit cost and you can see that updated so that we're now using this build up. But if we wanted, we could switch back and forth and just say, okay, maybe 35 is good to know, but maybe we wanna carry $40 for this assembly just as a little buffer. So lots of different options here, but that's how we can go through and start loading up composite structures with these different costs. Um, this works the exact same way if this was a um, a complex profile. So if we were to convert this to a complex profile, it, this is all just information that's associated with these. So um, it's the exact same process. We could even have this drawn as a generic wall here. We can switch this over and this will remain. So that data is set up because we've inputted it. And so even with drawing with generic structures, we can have all these same, uh, these same things. So, okay, great. That is what I wanted to cover here in this video. Hopefully this is very informative just to talk through how we can associate this information, these classification systems to these model elements and um, how useful labels can be for just giving us a nice clean projection of what our takeoff is what our cost is our cost buildup and um and yeah it you know this is pretty useful stuff for the planning process to determine exactly what goes into a project so all right thanks for checking out this video if you want to deploy a system just like this um then definitely check out the c5d systems workflow all these properties labels um, the sample files are included in that, so you can add this to your own and adjust accordingly. And, um, and yeah, that is uh, the workflow for today. Um, what's great about all this now, these are now being reported onto our different takeoff sheets. We can see our cost being calculated. We can see, let's see, we've got our slab on grade there, so that's good. Um, we can go to our exterior enclosure and we should see, well, we have a few values in this case, but um, we can see that wall coming through is right there because we are using our base unit cost. Switch this over to composite and we go back to our 35, 35 and should see that update as well. Everything's interconnected when using these properties. Awesome. Thanks for watching. We'll catch you here on another video soon. Uh, let me know what you think of this video. If you have uh, other suggestions, we'd love to hear it and we'd love to come back and do some more tutorials on uh, these subjects, exploring information behind model elements and how to build up some of these useful assemblies.